Let's talk about sequences, which, in my opinion, is one of the most important foundational things that you need to understand for filmmaking, video editing, content creation, really any type of visual storytelling at all. And in my opinion, this is where most internet videos and amateurish films fall apart. A poorly built sequence is gonna either confuse your audience or they're just gonna get bored and click away. Okay, so then what is a sequence? Well, functionally, it's just a few shots, typically around three to five, that are strung together in order to help move the story along. The assembly of film and how it can be changed. What's interesting is that depending on how you structure that sequence, depending on how you move the story along, it can drastically alter the tone of the video and your audience's understanding of your characters and their motivations, etc. 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 Let's assume he saw a woman holding a baby in her arms. Now we cut back to his reaction to what he sees. And he smiles. He's a kindly man. He's sympathetic. Now we'll put in a piece of film of a girl in a bikini. He looks, girl in a bikini, he smiles. What is he now? The dirty old man. He's no longer the benign gentleman who loves babies. So the first thing that I wanna talk about here in regards to sequencing is this idea of questions and answers. And so what that means is that each shot should either be instilling a question into your viewer's mind somewhat subconsciously, or it should be answering some of the questions that you stated previously in those other shots. These are simple questions, things like, who is it? What are they doing? Why are they doing it? Very simple, subconscious questions. So for example, at the start of this video, we want to set the scene. And here in Hamilton, we've got a lot of snow recently and it was coming down pretty good. So we shot a nice long lens shot, compressing a lot of that snow together to make it seem cold, like a, an environment that you would want to get out of. That might give me just enough contrast. And it's also the location that we're heading to. So it's somewhat significant and also maybe helpful. I'm gonna go this way, I'll be right back. And from that snowy shot, we cut right away to some winter gloves unlocking a lock. Now we don't know who's unlocking it. We don't even know what the thing they're unlocking is. The first time we shot this, I actually had my hood down and I realized, oh, we see right away, that's me. So we decided, let's reshoot it, put the hood up and obscure the image of myself. Finally, we have the last reveal, which is you now see the tires of my van rolling in, which then punches out once more to a nice wide shot where we see this large warehouse. And finally, we have one last shot from the front of my van where you get to see it is I, Jesse, driving into the location where you would eventually uh, see me here delivering these lines to you. One of the things that I like to pay a lot of attention to, and it's just important for sequencing in general, is that there is a strong resolution to your sequence. Now we know it was Kristoff. He was cutting a hole, but not only was he cutting one hole, he was cutting several holes into several shipping containers. Resolution. If you saw our last video, then you'd know what this is all about, which is that we were recently evicted from our studio and in a last ditch effort to 
figure what to do next, we decided to buy a bunch of used shipping containers and we are now in the process of building out our dream creative space. And so obviously we're shooting a lot of sequences, bringing in containers, cutting, insulating. Every step of the way is gonna have to get sequenced. Also, this video is taking so much longer to shoot than we had anticipated. We are very quickly losing light and we ended up having to shoot this now with a 120D in the Fresnel. We've got a P60C up through the skylight. We've got, hi Dave. Hi. <laughs> We've got another P60C over here. Uh, making videos takes a long time. This video is brought to you by the very fine folks over at Storyblocks. Thumbs up? What? <laughs> Storyblocks is the go-to resource for super high quality stock footage, sound effects, graphic elements, after effects templates, and more and more, the list goes on. Storyblocks currently has well over 1 million digital assets, and they're continuously adding to this week after week after week. And with their very affordable, unlimited, all access subscription package, you get access to all of that. So that means there are millions of ways for you to improve your videos. In fact, when we started shooting the opening sequence of this video, so we actually used some of Storyblocks' digital snow assets. And doing things like that just really helps tie your sequences together. So if you're looking to learn more about Storyblocks and their unlimited all access plan, click the link down in the description or go to www.storyblocks.com slash Jesse Driftwood. Yeah. If you, uh, if you pay attention, those lights actually take quite a long time to turn on. So the sequence, what it does is it shows the passage of time. The first shot, you start seeing a glowing ember, you're not sure what it is, and then suddenly, goosh, 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 lights are turning on, you see a finger switching the breakers, and that brings us back here, where Kristoff's in the background, turning the lights on for me, because we took too long to make this video. One final tip I wanted to throw in here isn't necessarily just about sequencing and it's kind of directed at all of you internet video creators, the vloggers, the TikTokers, which is this idea that's commonly referred to as show don't tell. Because filmmaking, video making is a visual storytelling medium, we don't always have to use visuals and dialogue in order to move the plot forward. I can't tell you how many times I've watched someone's video where they're like, oh, I've got to go to the grocery store to pick up bananas and oats for this new banana oat recipe I'm working on. And then the next sequence is them at the grocery store and you're watching them buy bananas and you're watching them buy oats and you're like, yeah, I know you already said this. Whereas I think it's a much more powerful way of telling that story to start at the grocery store and we're wondering who is this? What are they shopping for? Oh, why did they get that? And then maybe when we get back to the house, you can tell us like, this is why I got these, because this is what we're going to do. But you still wanna leave space for intrigue. You wanna leave space for your audience to ask those questions because it feels good when they feel like they found the answers, that they came to the conclusion on their own. They're not constantly being spoon fed. Thank you so much for watching this video. I, I really hope you did learn something, you had some type of takeaway. Um, if I had to boil it all down to something, it's make sure your sequences, not just your whole story, but even your sequences, have a beginning, a middle, and, uh, and, an, and an end. That's what film can do for you, or you for it, as it were. <laughs>